Welcome back all you fans and friends of um, business statistics. Um, we're going to talk about confidence intervals for proportions. They work very much like confidence intervals for the mean, except we're going to use proportions. And this little guy on my screen is a wombat. And the reason he's there will become somewhat obvious in a moment. All right, so what do we need to know about confidence intervals for proportions? We need to know that there's some really good news. Uh, one of the pieces of great news is that we are back to standard confidence interval values. Because we are using a Z alpha 2 for these, we can go back to these standard intervals where we have 95% equals 1.96, 80%, 1 1.28, and so forth. So that's the great news. The other great news is that proportions are really nothing different than some pretty fundamental per percentages or probabilities. The proportion is nothing more than the percentage of the population or sample that has the characteristics that you're interested in. So if I randomly survey 100 people and ask them what percentage of them went as a serial killer for Halloween and 10 of them say they did, then 10 out of 100 is my proportion or 10%, which is probably higher than you would actually have gotten. So I'm going to use these standard confidence interval values. I'm going to remember that a proportion is nothing more than what we're interested in, characteristic we're interested in, divided by the total number of people either in our population or our sample. So um, let's work a fast problem with this and I think you guys will really get the hang of this because you're already good at the other um, confidence intervals. Okay, this is fundamentally um, just the curve and the way that this curve works for these 99% confidence intervals. We know that we have 49.5% of the data on the left side, which is the negative side of the curve, 49.5% on the right side, or the positive side of the curve, making up the total of my 99% confidence interval. I'm solving for a lower interval level or boundary and an upper confidence interval level or boundary, which means that I have 0 0.005 or 0.005% of my data falling in these two cur in these two tails right here. Out here in these 0.005, those are my probabilities of missing the true proportion of the population when I come up with this estimation of this confidence, 99% confidence interval. It's going to fall between the upper boundary here and the lower boundary here. So how do we do that? Let's take a look at this problem. The problem says that the owner of a local pest control business wants to determine the proportion of homeowners who are infested with wombats. So he randomly selects and surveys 100 homeowners, and very surprisingly, he finds that 80 out of, the, of 100 of them are having trouble with wombats at their homes. He wants to be certain that he has enough wombat traps in his truck, so he has asked you to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of the population who experience problems with wombat infestation. So let's see what do we have. We're trying to estimate, we're trying to estimate this proportion right here in the center. We're looking for P or the proportion of the population. So what do we have? We have 80 out of 100 are having trouble. So all of a sudden I know that that P is equal to 80%. So last time I did my math, 80 divided by 100 was 80%. I want a 95% confidence interval. So I'm gonna take that Z alpha, right? Off of my standard chart. I'm gonna know that this value for Z alpha for 95% is simply dropping in our friend 1.96 here. We already know N, don't we? I know N because how many people did he ask about wombat trouble? A hundred. 
so I have a hundred. And I also am able to calculate one minus P, aren't I? Because if P is 80%, then one minus P, 80% minus 100 has to be, you got it, 20%. So let me drop some of this stuff in and see what we come up with. And this is what we look like when we get done. Remember, we simply took the P, we took that 80 divided by 100, that become, became P here, P here. We took the 95% confidence interval, so that 1.96 here, 1.96 here. The only thing, other thing I had to do to the formula was 1 minus P. Remember we said that P was 0 0.80, 1 minus P has got to be 0 0.20. So now just make sure that you get your order of operations here correctly because the first thing that you're going to have to do is multiply this 0 0.80 times the 0 0.20 divide it by 100 then take the square root of it. Mul time, multiply that times this add it to this for the remember the upper side is here do the same thing here except subtract it because the lower side of the curve is here. So this left-hand side of the formula is going to give me the value for that lower level or the lower end of the confidence interval. This upper or right-hand side of the formula is going to give me this upper or highest end of this 95% confidence interval. So I've done a little bit of math magic here while you all were, were getting a snack or whatever, or I guess I was getting a snack. And everything under that radical of square root came out to 0 0.04. So now I'm just going to continue on into my formula, multiply that times 1.96. According to my magic calculator, I get 0 0.0784. Look like it to me. Um, the nice thing is, is that once you calculated this little piece of the formula here once, I mean, it's obviously the same on this side, since the distribution is normal, and I have the same size, same amount of data on the left and the right, so personally, I only do that math once, and then I'm going to subtract it from that P equal to 0.80. Remember, we got that over here from my 80 out of 100 people with the wombats. And now this will solve for me the lower limit and upper limit of the 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of the population who are infested by wombats.